Okay, uh, next topic is going to be AC joint arthritis. Um, this has not been covered by any of the other um, webinars to date. Uh, this is uh, caused by transmission of large loads to a small contact area. This is a classic uh, AP x-ray showing arthritis of the AC joint. You can see cyst formation uh, in the lateral clavicle. Uh, hypertrophy of the clavicle, little soft tissue swelling, which often goes along with this. Um, it's more common uh, with aging, but can occur even in the second decade of life. There are some risk factors inclu involved, including prior AC separations. Uh, and of course, those folks who lift a lot of weights can get AC joint osteolysis, which we'll show in a moment, uh, and then also um, uh, um, uh, arthritis as well. Here's a classic case of uh, distal clavicle osteolysis. This is a 32-year-old weightlifter. Uh, you can see the cyst formation. And they actually get uh, what looks to be increased space in the AC joint, not decreased like an AC joint arthritis patient. Uh, and these can be extremely painful and inflammatory um, and uh, uh, can really uh, uh, make the patients quite symptomatic and, and certainly have to limit their weightlifting activities for a period of time. Uh, the AC joint anatomy, remember it's a diarthrodial joint. Uh, it articulates the scapula to the clavicle and does have that fibrocartilaginous disc. Uh, the ligaments that support it are the AC ligaments, both superior and inferior, and those are going to be the ligaments that provide anterior-posterior instability. And then the coracoclavicular ligaments, which are shown here, obviously the conoid and the trapezoid, are going to provide supra-inferior in, uh, stability. One of the things that's important to remember is that if you take out these ligaments of the AC joint in someone who's had a type 2 AC separation, in other words, you do a distal clavicle resection, that can lead to increased AP instability in those patients. It's been pretty well documented in the literature. We wrote a paper on this a long time ago. Others have as well. So it's really important to make sure that we uh, pay attention to the superior capsule of the AC joint. If you're doing an arthroscopic distal clavicle resection, by design, you have to remove the inferior capsule. That gives you access to the joint. But if you bugger up those superior capsular ligaments, that can lead to an instability pattern that we actually uh, don't necessarily have great treatment options for. So in, in, in some situations, if I'm dealing with a patient, for example, tomorrow in the OR, I have a, a gentleman with a very large dorsal spur of his distal clavicle with AC joint arthritis. And I do that procedure open because I don't want to have to worry about uh, preserving the capsule or potentially damaging the capsule and if I do an open approach I can open the capsule and then make sure I repair it anatomically at the end of the procedure. So just a, a, a pearl of how I manage uh, those large dorsal spurs. I actually prefer to do that as one of the few shoulder procedures as we do uh, without the arthroscope. <coughs> All right, so these patients are going to have pain over the AC joint. They're going to have pain with cross-body adduction. And those two things are really important to remember. Now, remember as well on physical exam, when we do the cross-body adduction maneuver, if they say they have pain along the lateral arm, right here, which is what many will say, that's not a, a positive test for AC joint. The pain has to be where your finger and thumb are, preferably right over the AC joint. Pain coming down the lateral side obviously could just be subacromial bursitis or impingement type symptoms and may not have anything to do and usually doesn't have anything to do with any uh, symptomatic AC joint. Really important to differentiate that. Uh, different uh, x-rays can be used. The Zanka view is a 15 degree cephalic tilt view. Uh, that can be very helpful. Uh, if you're looking for AC joint instability or uh, AC joint um, uh, variance, then getting an AP of both AC joints on one x-ray without weights is a nice way to be able to measure the coracoclavicular distance. Uh, but we're looking for osteophytes and joint space narrowing for arthritis, osteolysis, which we've just mentioned. Uh, the imaging findings do not always correlate with patient symptoms, and that's something that's really important, especially uh, with MRI, and we'll show that more in a second. So here's osteophytes <coughs> and joint space narrowing. Uh, and this is a study that Beth Schubenstein uh, co uh, first authored uh, many years ago when she was a resident at Columbia. She's now an attending at HSS on the uh, sports medicine service. But this was an observation we had made that we saw a lot of these MRIs with uh, 
horrible looking AC joints and they often did not have uh, clinical uh, findings. But the one thing we did find is that if you have this bone marrow edema in the lateral clavicle and medial acromion, uh, that was positive uh, correlated, po had positive correlation about 85 to 88 percent of the time. But simply having degenerative changes on T2 uh, MRIs is very common and not something that you should be making clinical decisions on. So make sure you examine the AC joint if you're doing rotator cuff surgery and uh, only if the AC joint is symptomatic do we actually take care of it uh, surgically. I don't do routine AC joint resection based on MRI or x-ray criteria. If you're operating on the patient and you see this finding, however, with the significant bone marrow edema, make sure you do another good uh, exam before you uh, um, uh, leave the o before you go to the operating room to make sure that's not a symptomatic uh, AC joint. <clears throat> Treatment for arthritis, like everything, is non-operative for the, uh, the mainstay. We're going to modify activities and try to avoid uh, high stressing of the AC joint um, <clears throat> and uh, try to strengthen the surrounding muscles, although I will say this is a difficult joint to treat non-operatively because if it's symptomatic, uh, it's uh, pretty hard to, uh, to get it asymptomatic. Um, so, corticosteroid injections uh, are the mainstay for AC joint problems, uh, at least at the first line of defense. This is a uh, non-ultrasound guided injection. I don't do these anymore because we use ultrasound for 100% of our shoulder injections. But you can see the technique. We sterilely prepared the area, finger and thumb on the AC joint, and shooting for the goalposts, so to, uh, so to speak, uh, to go right in between. You can feel when you're in the joint. Uh, and it is a very small joint, so you're only going to be able to put in a couple cc's of your medication. Uh, you can go deep uh, into the bursa uh, and uh, uh, pierce through the inferior capsule to try to do a bursal injection after you've done your AC joint injection as well. You can see that only 44% of AC uh, or 44% of injections miss the joint, and that may be optimistic. I think some studies have shown much higher than that as well. So if you have access to ultrasound, you should absolutely use it because it increases your diagnostic and therapeutic uh, accuracy. <clears throat> this is what it looks like with a distal, uh, direct uh, distal clavicle resection. And you can see the uh, clavicle on the left and the acromions on the right. We're viewing from an anterior viewing portal, and I'm bringing the burr, which is a 5, 5 millimeter burr, in from the posterior um, uh, AC joint portal. And again, this is the kind of case you have to be careful that you do not uh, disrupt the superior capsule on. If you look at arthroscopic versus open, um, uh, there's really been no differences uh, that have been shown in the peer-reviewed literature. Um, uh, maybe there's the typical advantages of arthroscopy giving you other things you can do, but even that's debatable on whether that changes uh, the outcomes. Uh, and if you do it open, as I mentioned, a, del a meticulous repair of the delta trapezial fascia is necessary, but actually, in some sense, as we said, advantageous uh, to make sure that we don't have an incompetent superior capsule. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.